Welcome to Inside Boxing. Throwdown. Steve Johnson on my right. Sugarfoot. Eric Duran on my left. Anyhow, this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about amateur boxing. Because as we all know, it's the amateurs that turn into pros. It's the amateurs, the up-and-coming fighters that we like to, that we don't see in the limelight. But these are the guys that are coming up and are going to be able to perform into world-class professionals. So we're going to talk about the state of amateur boxing, uh, mainly in the United States, and how somehow America has lost that grip when it comes to international competition in the amateurs. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, give our opinions on the whys and what can be, <clears throat> what can be fixed. Now, um, let's talk about amateur boxing in, in the United States. Okay, the sanctioning body is U, uh, USBA, uh, USA Boxing. USA Boxing. Uh, so go ahead, uh, Eric, give us, give us uh, your opinion and what, what, what can happen. Here's my opinion of why. Uh, we, we've talked about this in, in previous um, conversations. Why don't we have an American heavyweight? Well, they're playing power forward in the NBA. They're playing middle linebacker in the NFL. It's the same thing at, at, at the kids' level. They're playing football. They're playing baseball. They're playing basketball. Nowadays... Where they say MMA is taking over boxing, it's happening in the lower ages. Kids are in these MMA, gy MMA gyms learning uh, jiu-jitsu and judo, uh, judo. The wrestling programs in inner city Denver are booming. There's wrestling tournaments every weekend. There's not an amateur boxing show every weekend. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you know anyone who's in the wrestling programs, go to Facebook, go to Twitter, um, Instagram. Kids wrestling is booming. Mm -hmm. MMA and kids are booming. And like I said, we still got to compete with the big sports, football, basketball, and baseball. Well, that's an excellent point. And, you know, we've got our own um, local favorite, uh, former champion boxer, Frankie Sanchez. Mm -hmm. You know, his son, Coco, who just had that heart surgery uh, just a couple of months ago. Now, he's a champion wrestler. This wrestler. Kid's 10 years old, but he's a champion wrestler. And uh, no boxing for him, but wrestling. So you make a good point. That makes a good point because uh, 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 Frankie Sanchez went through the whole amateur uh, program yes. since he was a kid. Went to uh, all, I think he went to Marquette. He he he, he vied for the uh, the Olympics. I mean, he went through that. And for him to elect to put his own son into wrestling, it says something. They, it says they, they, they something. deem wrestling and, and some of the other MMA practices to be safer than boxing. Mm -hmm. And, and football is facing the same dilemma Without a doubt. with the concussion syndromes. Yeah. It's coming all the way. It's not just the NFL problem. It's happening in college. Contact it's sports. happening in high school. It's a sport. I mean, they're taking dodgeball out of gym classes. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you get hit in the head, That's you know. Right. Uh, so, so, so basically, let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about what has to happen, what could happen. You know, let's talk about the, the, the what ifs, should ifs. And all that good stuff. Okay. Well, one thing that's going to have to happen is is that um, there's going to have to be a focus on keeping costs, you know, to where they're um, just costs that can be afforded by a family. Um, right now, for you know, USA Boxing just raised their rates. I mean, um, on one end, I understand because everything is rate. Look, look at our insurance. Our insurance just went up. Um, inflation on everything is going up. So it's kind of seems like it would be a, a natural thing that they would raise up their rates. But there has to be a way um, that we can <clears throat> try to get something that is more rel you know, more on an even keel that people can know what they're going to be up against. Right now, as you know, Radio, um, in order to pay, you know, to be a member of USA Boxing <clears throat> is what you have to be in order to compete mm -hmm. in these national tournaments. Um, that is one obstacle, but you know, you pay your fifty-five dollar. What is it now? Sixty-five dollars or whatever it is to to be a yeah, member of USA up. Boxing. But it's to go up. to these um, shows um, to compete, to be regional champ, uh, national champ, whatever, you basically have to pay your own way. You I mean, you know, you get a nice little stipend. I, I'll give here in Colorado. We have our LBC is one of the better LBCs in the country as far as trying to help. LBC, you know, LBCs. In the country. Oh, I'm sorry. Local Boxing Committee. Okay. And that's a, that's a, a branch of USA Boxing. Um, our LBC here in Colorado is one of the better in uh, providing funding in the country um, to try to help these kids out. Jeannie DePriest has done a great job. She's the president of the Colorado LBC. And, and uh, kudos to her for what she's trying to do. But um, she's like everyone else. You know, you got 
battles. And contrary to what a lot of people believe, my own belief is is that um, it's just not boxing. I mean, you got kids. I don't know about you guys, but my grandson, you know, I, I'm talking about when we went to register him, you know, to play sports now in school. It's amazing. Well, it's what you, really you had to do, if you want to play basketball, you had to just have a pair shoes. of shoes. Yeah. Now you, got, yeah. you got to pay like 200 bucks. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's like for a poor family. So where are they going to go? This okay, is but, a chance but, but, for boxing to be able to be back in the limelight because it's still one of the cheaper sports. But like I said, they have to drop the costs on it and they have to make injury, um, safety prevention of in injury paramount. Okay. And I, we've we've I, got a key. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to let, let, let it off the hook that easy okay. as far as a general relationship okay. Okay, in, in all sports. When you talk about uh, Olympic, Olympic type sports, which, which is every, every sport that we're, I want to talk about boxing, and, and, and as we know, the problems and the successes start at the top. Okay. Okay. And right now in the United States, it's USA Boxing that controls amateur boxing. You cannot box in an amateur event. You cannot com com compete unless you're a member of USA Boxing. You cannot you can advise, you cannot vie for the uh, for the Olympic uh, to represent your country unless you go through. And and bottom line, there's a lot of politics that are irritating and roadblocks for the kids. The bottom line for the kids to grow up this ladder and to get into get into a, a successful and a fruitful amateur boxing career. Mm -hmm. Okay, just like anything else, more and more now that I got into into amateur boxing, you see. Selected, selected uh, uh, boxers that come from different camps that are selected in there, and they're kind of given the 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 they, they're, the road is paid for them, regardless if they have the skills or if they don't have the skills. It's the politics behind it. As we know, USA Boxing, they were even suspended by the United States Olympic Committee, the USOC, last year because of because of whatever you want to call it. No, that was Aiba. I even not not U.S. Well, they were suspended. Yes, they were uh, suspended. Okay, and, and the reason that we're suspended is because there's a problem in that administration. Now, yes, they've done some things to try to change that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that 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 uh, amateur boxing has always had. Let's say you're a, you're an amateur coach mm -hmm. and you're training a group of coaches and you get a good fighter to come in, and that fighter is selected to start yeah. going up the ladder to represent internationally. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? U.S. coach can't go. Exactly. Now, now here, this kid all his life. All he's known is you how to train him. Now, all of a sudden, he finds himself in Marquette, Michigan, or somewhere else with a coach that's been selected yeah. by USA Boxing. Okay, and, and that coach don't know anything about this kid. Exactly. Okay. And, and here's here's another point, though. Um, if you're good at basketball as a senior, you're good at football as a senior, what are your possibilities? Scholarships to college. If you're a good 18-year-old boxer... There's really no scholarship yeah, opportunities to further your education. It's either you turn pro, make some chump yeah. change, and before you know it, you're six and five, and you're done. That, my friend, is what's wrong with, with the American boxing and why when they jump into professional boxing, we don't always have the best fighters out there representing. I mean, obviously, something has to happen there. Something has to happen with the organization at the top. Yes, they're making changes at, at USA Boxing, but... As long as they have these, 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 every state has their little LBC that control it. These LBCs to let you know they also have their boxing clubs. Mm -hmm. They also have their. So it's natural, human natural to have your favorites. Okay, it's kind of hard to close your eye and say, okay, well, we know that our boxers are, are are good and stuff, and we know that Jones is over there are better fighters, but. Forget them. We're gonna we're gonna work for our own. It's just human nature to favor whether you want to or not. It's human nature to favor. Competition. So so, so it has to happen on the lower level where the organization has to put together a program where the better boxers advance to represent the United States. It hasn't been happening in a long time, and unless it changes back, you remember back in the days where. You know, your Olympians with your Sugar Rays and your Oscar De La Hoya's. And then when the best fighters actually came out, and you just don't see that anymore. Yeah. Well, let me, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. Um, when, when, it just dawned on me when you mentioned, like you said, Oscar De La Hoya, um, Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, Pernell Whitaker, these guys. Um, the attraction 
for them to make the big money back in our day was getting that Olympic gold medal. Okay. Yes. With the infusion of money, okay, and from the pro ranks, and I will put this right in the lap of, uh, of the promote, promoters, okay, um, with the infusion of all the money they put in, uh, it's, the, the Olympic gold medal no longer has that luster that it once had. Now it's, it, it's, it's a competition between the promoters. When they see you got your kid like locally here, mm -hmm. Isaiah Lopez, I, I would not be surprised if one day uh, you call me and said, wow, top rank signed Isaiah Lopez, mm -hmm. because that's the way they're going. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the other sports, we talk about basketball and football. Look how basketball, you remember how they just turned around a few years ago and maybe you were basketball players have to have one year of college because the pros were going to break. They were starting to sign yeah. guys out they of high school. They were picking them up. And, and, and to, to, to piggyback off you, I mean, we're sending 18-year-old kids to the Olympics. They're fighting 26-year-old men mm -hmm. when they mm -hmm. face a guy from Cuba, when they face a, a guy from a, a European country. We're sending boys to fight men. That's the biggest problem, too. And the key well, is how are you going to keep the pros, the, the professional promoters, Away from the young kids. If that's what we're talking about, you can't. We're talking about, and, and there you go. You can't. Well, so you, how is money talk? talks? But, but you yeah. can't. But but the pool doesn't have to be so small that the promoters can scarf up. Right now, you have maybe two, two, maybe three uh, amateur fighters that the pros are all gobbling up. The professionals. Okay, there, there's no reason for that. There should be a pool of thirty and forty of, of uh, elite boxers so the pros can say, well, am I picking the wrong one? You know, am I getting this guy? Well, he's gonna, he may get beat by this guy because the problem is the organization, the way it works. Right now, amateurs, like you say, they, they turn 18 and, and in, in the United States, they may have 60, 70, 80 amateur bouts, okay? But that doesn't translate into experience because of the way this program is. Well, here's here's the they, other here's the other problem. Okay, let me finish because because they, they they ended up fighting John sixteen times. They ended up fighting Sam ten times. They ended up fighting the same fighters in their own local district. Mm -hmm. That even though they have as many fights as they have, it doesn't translate to an experience because they've seen very few styles. Yeah. Okay. So so that's that's something, and it's changing. Unfortunately, it's not the USA Boxing that's changing this. It's so other organizations that are changing this, yeah. this whole thing. But it's to make better boxers, better amateurs. But here, here, okay. here's the problem, though. It's, it's just not on USA Boxing. It's not on the organizations. What is the one thing we talk about a lot? Trainer of the year. So when a trainer thinks he has a good fighter, he says, you know what? If this guy wins a world title, they're going to look at me too. So let's turn him pro. Let's, you know, machismo comes in. Trainers are looking to be the next it Freddie does. Roach. It does. It the does. next Roger Mayweather. The They're, next Virgil uh, Hunter. They, they, they want to have their name. Guys right now. want to have their name right in now, the line. Money is the driving force in almost everything. everything we do in this world now. So and you can have any number of different organizations and amateurs that you say, hey, we're going to be different than USA Boxing. We're doing. But once they start raiding, the professional promoters start raiding your guys. And taking your guys too, I think you're going to feel the same heat that USA Boxing does. Um, USA sure. Boxing ridded them, was able to rid themselves of a cancer that they had a few years ago, and they're on their way building things up. We like the direction that they're trying to go, but they still have the obstacle in front of them where people are not happy with well, the, with the, the, the basic um, administration that is there. Okay, okay. You mentioned they got rid of it, and I, I agree with you. And it ain't no secret they got rid of Haladonis, okay? He was a poison in that organization, according to many, many people in the United States. They got rid of him, okay? But what about the rest of the thing? It, it's still basically the same structure. You still, I still hear the same names. I still hear the same same people. You mentioned Jeannie Dupriest here in Colorado and how Colorado is doing such a fantastic job. She doesn't advance within the organization. They have their favorites that they advance. The same names that have always been there. Because it's a business. Okay. That's how the business world it's works. It's a business. Yeah, that's business. Not, necessi not necessarily for it's not the kids. It's not sport anymore. It's a business. Well, let me yeah. tell you that, you know, every business, like you said, uh, almost every business has tried at some point to promote from outside. And most mm -hmm. of the time it fails. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have to have uh, loyalty from the people that are within, your within your structure in order for them to have confidence. USA Boxing is trying to rebuild that confidence. Like you said, they have several people that I still have questions how they're still there. But here's the bottom line. The bottom okay. line. Your LBC in Louisiana, your LBC in New York, your LBC in New Mexico, wherever you want, it's on your people 
You have the right to vote. You vote the people in there who are your leaders. Mm -hmm. If you don't vote the people in there as your correct leaders, how can you blame Louis USA Boxing for that? You know, like you said, everybody, most everyone here in Colorado acknowledges Jeannie's done a good job. I have a question myself why Jeannie was not promoted up in the, down, sent down to Colorado Springs and helped him. Yeah. I have no idea why she wasn't. I'm sure someone would come on the show and wanna, maybe we can call them to try to get someone to explain that. But at the same time, I'll be willing to bet you that everybody in every LBC will have the same question. Well, we've got Eric Duran here in New Mexico. How come he hasn't been brought down to Colorado Springs? <laughs> See, that's not what I'm hearing. I'm hearing everybody else. Well, that guy's a crook. He took money. Well, they'll all say that about somebody in the LBC. Right, right. But, but remember, that, uh, well, so the top, the top no, no, has no, to no. have their standards. Well, wait a minute. Like, here's the thing, though. But their standard, yeah. hold on. Their standard is to let you vote. Mm -hmm. You vote who you want in representing you. And if you if and you if your structure, if you how well, are, if, see, there, there again, I heard about votes being stopped. And you talked about Louisiana. They had a vote, and they said, "Well, wait a minute. We ain't taking that vote. We got to redo it by email." Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the Florida syndrome. Okay, it didn't go their way, so they stopped it. It didn't count. Now we're well, going to email. Well, we're going to, so, uh, so what I'm saying is, there's problems within the organization, and the bottom line is, it reflects the talent that we're producing in the United States. But hold States. on just a minute. You, you opened up a can of words because you said when there, you know, the vote was decided to go, it, it had to go um, email, okay? The reason that we decided to go email because there were people that were afraid. What you mean we? To, I didn't say we. <laughs> Did I say we? Yeah. Well, don't put yourself in part of that group. Oh, okay. In what well, group? The, the we. Oh, the reason we went to email. No, I didn't. No, I said the okay. reason that they went to email was because that there was allegations of people being afraid to voice their opinion. So what would you do if you're administrator? Well, would you, you say let's have a si not a silent vote? No, no. Let's do it by ballot. You write in what you want, and then you take the ballot. Well, I, I agree. Mean, I, I agree, but you don't do it. But you don't do it after. Well, let's don't get, do let's it after a vote has been well, taken. Let's get back to the bottom line. Yeah, like you said. Let's, let's finish get back to the bottom line because the bottom line is, is like you said, and I agree one hundred percent. There's problems that have to be rectified. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, is that in your BL LBC, you have the right to vote. Mm -hmm. Whoever you vote to represent you, whatever the cause, whatever the circumstance. That's who represents That's what you. you're stuck with. That's yes. right, and that's what you're stuck with. So to, when it goes to the national level, they're dealt the hand that they're given. Exactly. That's what they have if to do. If the deal. structure isn't strong, the top will fall. Yeah. Well, that's that's true, but it's up to the top to, to, to have that strong foundation. I mean, obviously, you have to weed out the bad mm -hmm. to stay strong. Well, and, having and said that, once you, well, you know, if, if, there's another out way to go, too. Okay? How about another organization? You know, well, the, the, I mean, there's 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 other in, other ways that you can go and do things. You know, we, we have right now in, in in place we have PAL. You know, we have Ringside. I mean, these are guys plenty that, of organizations. that organizations that you can got do something. You got the Golden Gloves uh, uh, throughout. There's, there there's plenty of other organizations. You got the USBL, which is an organization I started about four or five years ago. But there are organizations out there that are trying to make that are trying to make a difference. Right. And, I, and I think I think that's. I think I think it plays key. Mm -hmm. but the bottom line is we have to bring out the talent the best, in the United States, the best. the best talent. I agree. That's the number one issue that we have it, is that a people, and I'll agree with you, the majority of people right now feel like United States boxing in national, international tournaments were not having representation of what most of our people are figuring mm -hmm. are the best. And how we do that, I don't know. I'm sure you'll tell us how you're going to approach that later. Yeah, well, we will. I mean, there, there's there, our organization has a whole whole plan, and, and eventually, I promise, we'll get that out to the public uh, uh, when we're ready to, to bring it out to the public. Okay. Can, we, can we briefly talk about you know a couple of our local amateurs or sure. names that we know nationally? I know there's a kid, and we, just because we mentioned uh, Louisiana. Yeah. Uh, we got one kid, a kid, Jody Godier. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a kid, uh, Henry Allen the mm third. -hmm. Um, you know, uh, two kids, uh, uh, Manjaro Hills. Manjaro Hills. We've got some guys that are tremendous boxers down there. Here in, in Colorado, we have Misael Lopez. Mm -hmm. That's another subject that we'll, we'll get into at some time in depth. But Misael Lopez is one of the top amateur boxers in the country. I'm not in Colorado, in the country, and and because he's not doesn't have papers. You know, he's not able to compete in these national terms. I have a main problem with that is because. 
Misael Lopez. Was Misael Lopez born here in Denver? No, he's a resident. He's, he's a resident. He was brought as an infant, went brought through the school process, infant. getting ready to graduate high school. That's right. Has gone through school. He's lived his whole life here, basically. See, that's changed. In the United States. Because before, as long as you were a resident, you were able to compete in these in these uh, advancing tournaments. Mm -hmm. Well, they cut that now. Mm -hmm. and I, I, That's part of their, real be their rebuilding. But I really don't understand it. But but you're right. And I've let right. that be an issue to me is that USA Boxing will take the money from all of our doc undocumented, um, I'll say Latino boxers. But limits. Okay. But once they get, come out of state, okay, I believe they can go to regional. I don't even know if they can go to regional. They can't, they can't. But they, they can't go to national tournament at all. Any advancing So tournament. why would you take the money at all? My thing is, is that if you can't advance representing, we can't take your money at all. So once again, we come back to money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So see, there is an issue about money here, and that has to be dealt with. I agree. I agree with you 100%. So, so uh, I'm saying I, I think I think there's change coming in. Mm -hmm. I think you got organizations out there that that are working very hard. You got the the Golden Gloves organization, like you mentioned. You got uh, the the gloves like the Silver Gloves and all. The, you got these organizations, the PAL organization. The PAL organization is ready to throw their hat in. Okay, but. Hopefully that won't happen. But you got this organization. You got the U.S. Ringside. You got the U.S. You got Ringside. You got uh, my organization, USBL uh, League, which is basically a league throughout the United States. Uh, you got a lot of entities coming in, and I think that's going to make the difference. And you're going to start seeing the best uh, uh, amateur talent start rising to the top. It's going to happen, guys. And don't forget, guys, we've got it's 2014. Time is flies. We've only got two years, two years. and we got Olympics coming up, okay? I know that down in Colorado Springs, uh, Dr. Charles Butler, president of USA Boxing, and Anthony Barkowski, executive director, I know they're working hard, you know, trying to get things done. Um, there's always going to be uh, work to do. There's always going to be controversy, <laughs> you know, trying to keep it at a minimum with all these different egos and personalities in boxing. It's a tough thing to do. But like you said, there's got to be a common ground, our common ground. The, I know the three of us, our common ground is, is that we just want to see the best. I you know, agree. We don't I care agree. about all the politics, all the grandstanding, all the my kid is better than yours, all that crap. We just want to see the best kids going to represent USA here in Rio de Janeiro, which, by the way, yeah, I'm hoping that um, Inside Boxing Throwdown, it likes to send me. You two guys are still young. You got more time. <laughs> I need to go to Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And I'll send you pictures of me and my Speedos on the beach. <laughs> Not a problem. But anyway, listen, guys. Uh, as I promised, information to come out from the United States Boxing League, the amateur side, uh, here on, it's going to be a constant flow. But for those of you guys that want to just get a head start and kind of get a, a jump start and see what's going on, we've been, we've been active for over two years now, uh, go to the website. It's U.S. Boxing League. Boxing and League is spelled out. U.S. Boxing League.com. And it's going to give you information about what we're doing, what we've been doing for the past couple of years. And uh, uh, we'll just continue to, to, to uh, spread the news and let people know about our organization and what we're doing in the amateur side. Sounds good. Okay. So, in the meantime, until our next shows, keep them hands up.